Countdowns, countdowns, countdowns. What an interesting form of video entertainment this is. Ranking contenders of a specific topic in the order in which you please is just something that never gets old to me. And if you're a follower of this channel, you would know that I practically live to make these things. A lot of my frequent viewers out there have often asked me, how do you make a countdown? Well, that's what I'm here to talk to you about. Now, let me tell you, countdowns are not easy to make. These videos take a lot of dedication, patience, and sheer passion to create. For whatever reason, I've been getting a lot of requests to make this sort of thing. So, I've concocted this special tutorial video to enlighten all you aspiring countdown makers. Yeah, yeah, I know. Three other members of this community have made a similar tutorial like this before. So, why make another? Some of you may not have seen any of them yet. Or maybe you're a newcomer. Or maybe you're just curious how I do it. I don't know. There's always room for more insight. Let's get this started then, shall we? To start, it's best to go over the standard equipment. First, you'll need a reliable computer to work with. Thank you, Captain Duh! This usually isn't something that gives anybody trouble, but you need to have a computer that can cope with whatever editing software you decide to use. I'll leave you to determine the specs of your computer, as I'm no super smart expert on that. Though, this much is evident. Higher performance RAM and more hard drive space will make things so much easier for you. The greater your computer is, the easier it is to make countdowns. Herp a derp. The laptop that I use runs at 6 gigabytes of RAM and holds 300 gigs worth of space for the primary storage. Considering this thing's over 6 years old, that's not too shabby. Not the fastest thing alive, but it gets any job I want finished without dire hassles in the end, barring any of those bullshit rendering errors. Though, the RAM your computer runs out is the most crucial spec for your computer. If you've got excellent RAM, but have as much hard drive space as I have respect for politicians, well, you got a bit of a shortcoming. But you can always work around that thanks to external hard drives. If you've got the cash, 80 or so bucks can get you, like, a terabyte worth of storage space. That's more than enough for anything. If your RAM is anything less than 4 gigs, you might have a slow time. If you're thinking of shifting to a computer specifically for this kind of stuff, do a little bit of research prior to purchase. God, I sound like Bill Gates' peddler. Point is, don't just rush in thinking the specs don't matter. They do. Aside from the computer, the most important detail is your microphone. If you plan to stick with this hobby long enough, chances are that you'll eventually need to step into vocal projects. Text countdowns aren't exactly the rage today. In which case, you'll need to make friends with the tech geek behind your local circuit city, or invest some money towards a good quality mic. Let me just say this right now, hunting for an ideal mic isn't as stressful as it may seem. Regardless of any potential constructive criticism hurled at what your mic sounds like, you don't need, nor do you want, to shell out a ridiculous amount of cash for a PERFECT MICROPHONE. You are wasting money. I mean really. So many consumers looking to buy a microphone either don't know how much cash they're wasting when there are better prices for about the same exact quality, or they really don't give a shit as to where their money goes. Not trying to insult anyone here, but spending little over 65 bucks on any mic is kind of a stupid thing to do if all you're focused on is the audio quality. I can understand shelling out enough dough for more options with the hookups and crap, but that much just for sounding no different than a common headset? You don't need that shit. I'm looking squarely at your fuzzy ass blue yeti. You may call it penny pension, but I call it thinking. Here's a couple recommendations I have. The mic that I've used for the longest time is the GigaWare Digital USB headset. This headset has worked wonders for me. It has above decent sound quality for both listening and recording, a pretty steady mic, and it lasted me 25 months. This one will cost you around 35 to 40 bucks. You should be able to buy it at any Radio Shack, that's where I got it, but there are plenty of online retailers that sell it. It's a decent headset. Most of the Logitech headsets are rather safe as well, albeit a tad spiky with the audio playback. They're not too bad to start out with. But by and far, the highest recommendation I have topples everything I've ever used. It's the Turtle Beach Air Force X12. This is, dare I say, the perfect headset. The audio quality is top notch, it's a comfy fit, and my god, they're the greatest stereo headphones I've ever listened to. Many of you may have skeptical thoughts on this brand for whatever reason, but I'm telling you right now, they're legit. These babies may cost you a good 60 bucks, but that's cash very well spent. Wanna know how the audio quality is? <laughs> I'm using it right now. No need for overpriced fluff like this. 
just the Turtle Beach X12. Call toll free and order now. Batteries non existent. If you go to get one of these, assuming you get the same results as me, make sure it's the same model headset as mine. Otherwise, I can't guarantee the same value. If you're looking for a desk mic as opposed to a headset, you'll have to judge for yourself. As I've never used a desk mic or even a condenser mic myself. Sorry, but hey, you can always go for the Yeti! Surprise tip, stay away from the infamous desktop microphone. They sound about as good as Bubsy 4 on the DS. Whatever mic you initially decide to go with, just make sure it costs under $100, okay? Unless you want to waste your money, just saying. Another piece of equipment you'll probably need is a good camera. Whether it be a camcorder or even a webcam. For a relatively cheap, good quality webcam, I'd recommend the Logitech C615 HD webcam. I've been using mine since July 2012, and so far, it works great on my end. Except for top 10 Sonic games. Damn lens focus. This one should round you about uh, 80 bucks. For the quality it has, I'd say it's a good webcam to start out on. Now, a camera isn't really necessary. It's only necessary if you wish to show your face to your audience. Now, when getting a camera, make sure to go with one with a decent frame rate. The quality doesn't have to be the finest HD in the world, but make sure the camera can actually pick up your standard movements. Nobody wants to see you abusing your after images. The last thing that would come in handy is some sort of capture device. Now, a capture device isn't 100% mandatory for this sort of thing. Most of the needed footage for your video can easily be grabbed from YouTube, but there may come a time when you need some very specific footage for your topic, so you'll need to record your own footage for that. Truth be told, I'm very unfamiliar with video capturing devices. The best method that comes to my mind is using a DVD recorder to record your footage on rewritable CDs. Again, I can't give you any more details than that. You're on your own for that, Slick. Now that we've covered the hardware and equipment, it's time to go over the software. If it wasn't plain obvious, you'll need a good video editing software to work with. Windows Movie Maker and iMovie are the two most basic programs that you can have for this sort of thing. Most owners of either a Windows operating system or a Mac should have these programs already installed on their computer. Search hard, most of you should have one of them. Now, unless you have the mystic powers of the Movie Maker Wizard over here, these basic editing programs don't give you much to work with. Yes, they can get the job done, if you have the patience of a saint. But if you're looking to do something a little extra with your video, these aren't going to get you far. If you're wanting something that'll allow you to do more, then you'll need one of the more complex editing programs. Some of these include Final Cut Pro, Sony Vegas, Magic Movie Edit, AVS Video Editor, Adobe Premiere, and even Camtasia or Pinnacle Studio. All of these programs allow you to utilize multiple video and audio tracks at the same time while editing. Each of them have their own dominant strengths. For example, Sony Vegas has hands down the best rendering quality for your videos. Adobe Premiere, on the other hand, is the undisputed king of overlay editing and probably has the simplest keyframe system. The primary editing software that I use is Adobe Premiere Elements with common usage of Sony Vegas Pro 11. Both great software programs to use. They give you a lot of choices to work with, they have awesome rendering quality, and you can pretty much do anything with them except generate your own special effects from scratch. For special effects, the best program you can possibly use is Adobe After Effects. So if you're thinking of making your stuff heavy on effects, this is the program for you. How you get these programs, well, I'll let you handle that. I'm sorry, but if there's some pirating coming from any of you, I sure as hell don't want to be the captain. Guess I have to be a good boy and direct you to the legit way of getting them. Paying for it. You can either buy them from the respective software distributor, or torrent it. Arr, you scurvy weasels! <laughs> with the video editing program out of the way, it wouldn't hurt to have other programs to help you out with any creative ideas you make in cop. For example, if you wish to put sprite animations within your countdown, then having a program that specializes in animation like Adobe Flash would come in handy. Now, this is somewhat of a taboo aspect, because who the fuck ever talks about this? But I'll go over your photo editing and sound recording software. This should be elementary for most of you. But in case you're lost with this, I'll help you out. For these kind of videos, it's probably safe to bet that you'd want basic images to be involved with all your fancy footage down there on the timeline. Right? Most images you'll need can be found through the Google search. But if you wish to get rid of its background or do some other zany shit with it, you'll need either Photoshop or Paint.net. Paint.net is free and has plenty of options to work with. So, I definitely recommend that over Photoshop. The most common type of sound recording software is the default sound recorder, built into your computer from the get-go. If your computer somehow doesn't have this feature, don't fret. You can just download Audacity for free and record it straight from there. Audacity can not only record what sound is taken from your mic, but you can also edit the audio with certain effects and even remove static or background noise to make everything sound better. Examples? Say you need to sound tiny like this. Or like a giant. 
Or a robot. <laughs> it's crazy what you can do with this program. And it's free. Just a quick warning with Audacity, you might need an audio converter, as sound files can only be imported and therefore edited if they're a specific file type. Wave is the most common type it'll take. I'll supply a link to an audio converter that'll do the trick in the description. Also, unless you like to manually write your scripts down on actual paper, you'll need to make full use of your computer's default word processor. WordPad, Microsoft Office, and OpenOffice will be a lifesaver in this regard. Uh -huh. Now, this isn't something that is completely necessary, but I still think I should go over it. Intros for countdowns have had a certain degree of hate thrown at them. Many viewers think they're pointless, stupid, time-wasting, and numerous other absurd adjectives. Well, excuse me, but I simply must scoff at that. I went there. Now, it's true. You don't really need your own intro. But it would be nice for each one of your countdowns to be started with something that your viewers could easily identify. You know, sort of like your own trademark. Something like going into a countdown and saying, HOLY SHIT THAT'S Korda GUY! <clears throat> if you do decide to go with an intro, please abide by these crucial details. Number 1. Don't make it overly long. 30 seconds is a decent time for an intro. However, going over 40 seconds I think is a bit too far. Number 2. Fill it with things that characterize you. Whether it be the footage, your mascot, the music, or even the pace of it all. Number three, put some legitimate effort into it. Make it sync with the music. Give us lots of footage to look at. Make your viewers feel somewhat content while watching it. And number four, this is important. Make it yourself. If you're going to go so far as to stick something as a whole part of your channel, you really should do it yourself. Don't have your fancy editing friend or another countdown artist do it for you and slap your own production title on it like it's all you. Make your own intro, man. I bring this sort of thing up because I see it happen so often. Your channel, your effort. That's my motto. And while I'm by far the worst offender of this, I feel I should give my own advice on something. If you feel you have an unusual knack for making intros, keep in mind, you don't have to keep making new ones. If you're particularly proud of your first intro, then by all means, stick with it. Remixing your intro on multiple occasions isn't something that works out for everyone. And while it somehow tends to fly by smoothly whenever I do it, it's not something that everyone can do. Take it slow. Learn more about the hobby you're taking part in before going completely mental with it. Well, that's that. Guess I'll start making intro number 16 now. Oh man, this is the big one. Similar to how a marketing campaign affects the sales of a materialistic object, the scripting for a countdown is infinitely important. In fact, as far as the basic build goes, it's undoubtedly the most crucial aspect. I mean, what's a movie without its writing? Probably something on the sci-fi channel. When coming up with your own countdown, you need to take into account just how important this is. Unless you'd rather do it unscripted, yeah, bad idea. The first thing you need to determine is your topic. Whether it be complex, simple, negative, or positive, the topic serves as your starting point. Pick a topic, any topic. Let's say, for example, top 10 most underrated video games. With the subject set, you should proceed to think of some candidates for your list. Like, say, Pac-Man World 2, Creature from the Krusty Krab, that Tamagotchi you got out of your Captain Crunch, whatever. Once you've figured out all the contenders, you need to order them based on how your ranking goes, whether it be by certain factual variables or just your opinion. This can be very frustrating at some points. With a lot of topics brought forth, there will be times where your opinions on each entry conflict with one another. This is a personal detail in which I can't advise you on much. Just reflect on it for a while and finalize the order at your own pace. Once you have your entry set, you should start going over each of them individually, whether it be games, characters, certain gameplay elements, or even some central focus you may think of. You need to explain your own thoughts on each entry, as well as some factual details concerning each and every one of them. This is something that can only be done by you. I can't tell you word for word what you have to say. No der. It doesn't have to be limited to video games either. If you wish to make a topic concerning other branches of media, by all means, go wild with it. Just simply writing about the entries isn't enough. There are certain things you need to be wary of when writing. First off, you need to determine what style you wish to use. The way I see it, there are three basic style templates for this sort of thing, and those would be informative, humor-based, or a controlled mix of the two. The audience that eventually gathers around you tends to have an eye for entertainment, and I very much agree with them. Even if your writing isn't the best in the world, at the very least, try to be entertaining. Throw in some jokes, funny references, or hilariously over-exaggerate your delivery in some way. LIKE THIS! Give your audience something amusing to watch and or listen to, be it referential or your very own humor. 
However, there are many cases in which the writing in itself effectively supplies said amusement. The Autark of Flame in his Top 10 Scariest Twin Peak moments is a wondrous example of this. Though, bear in mind, there is such a thing as too much elaboration. If you're someone who tends to make insanely long countdowns, you need to muster in some sort of general amusement to balance out the long script. That way, the flow of your video becomes very streamlined. Making a long list isn't a bad thing in the slightest. Just make sure that you don't make it drag on. Deliver a pace in which your audience can keep up with and enjoy at the same time. Yes, it is rather difficult to maintain this. But once you do, it'll make things so much better. Know that you don't have to stand by these exact style templates. Generate your own mix of details and come up with a style that works best for you. The more unique your style is, the more you'll stick out. Which is, to me at least, a good thing. Lastly, I need to stress something very important. When scripting, do not, I repeat, do not contrive your words. This is something that very few people seem to abide with. Just because you are on the internet, that doesn't mean you have to hide yourself from your audience. In fact, I'd say that's a bad thing to do. Talk and act like you normally would as an everyday person. The ability to speak your own mind is key when writing something like this. If you do that, you won't have to lie about anything. That way, the whole process feels a lot more natural. That's how improvement kicks in. I know this is somewhat of a given, but it's just something that I find really important. As corny as this may sound, be yourself. Another thing, which goes back to the whole intro fiasco, the script needs one person and one person only to make itself. You. Listen, I know that writing isn't the easiest thing there is, but that doesn't mean you have to skimp out on it. Unless you have a channel that clearly has more than one person managing the content, take charge and make your own scripts the way you want them. Don't have a friend that none of your subscribers knows about write them for you. If you're gonna do that, don't dedicate the channel to you and you alone. I can't stand when users do this, and it really saddens me that the original writer for these works isn't credited nearly as much as the slup that runs the channel. Write your own material! Lastly, don't stress your opinion as fact. It's just annoying when one does that. Almost as annoying as those who preach it to you when you're not even doing it. Ain't the internet just magical? And so we come to my personal favorite part of this process, the editing. Think of editing as the scripting's slightly less important twin brother. Both of them are strong key factors to how your video will turn out, and each of them are equally customizable. Once you finish your finalized script, it's time to bring it to life. Choosing one of the editing programs you ultimately want to go with can determine whether or not this will be an easy, fun ride, or a detestable backbreaker. The script in which you wrote should supply enough information for you to know what footage you'll exactly need. As Marty McBoxia already exemplified, the script should make editing a breeze. It would mostly come down to just saying the proper footage bits over your own narration. If you choose to utilize stock footage, it's inevitable that you'll have to go footage hunting. Footage hunting sucks, though it is something you'll need to deal with if you're unable to supply your own. Downloading the footage isn't too much of a problem with the choice of video downloaders. The most commonly used one is YouTube Downloader. It's fast, supplies you with the ability to download in HD quality, and is compatible with the four big internet browsers for PC and Mac. Another one I would recommend is FreeMake Video Converter. It's a little slower than the aforementioned YouTube downloader, but it can both download and convert videos from multiple sites into multiple different file types. I'll supply a link to these recommended download apps in the description below, or wherever Google has put it this time. Once you have your footage, you'll need to record your lines. With both your microphone and script on standby, it's time to generate your commentary. Now, how you go on about this is something you yourself have to figure out. However, I do have advice to give. If, for whatever reason, you fuck up on a line, please do your best and try to record multiple takes. If you stutter on a sentence, sneeze, or get jumped by that Gengar behind you, say the line again. If it takes you a while to get the exact commentary you want, that's fine. You can cut out any blunders you make during the editing of your video. The more you have to work with, the better. For the editing itself, well, there's not too much I can say, really. The only real advice I can give here is, make sure you edit around your narration pauses. Pausing excessively can strike somewhat of a uh, disinterest for a lot of viewers. Unless the scenario you scripted actually involves pausing, it's best to keep them to a minimum. And that's pretty much all the info I can give out. If you choose to go straight in and fend for yourself, you'll have to familiarize yourself with what your editing software can truly do. Tinker around with what you got for a while, and soon enough, you'll be ready to edit a full video all on your own. Why am I not telling you word for word how to do this? Learning how to do it yourself will allow you to gain more experience, and thusly, you'll be able to hold your own with future projects to come. 
that, and I'm keeping my secret techniques hidden. That after me lucky secrets! As you can figure, I don't need to hold your hand through all of this. After all, I'm a countdown maker, not a super guide. <laughs> if there's any final bits of advice I can give, it's this. If you're gonna stick with this hobby for a while, learn to have actual fun with it. Yes, making countdowns requires a lot of determination, patience, and even creativity in many areas. It's hard work, but it does have some truly excellent payoff. There will be times where you get frustrated, lost, dead in a rut even, but it's best to go on about this the right way. If making countdowns feels like a backbreaking chore, maybe this isn't the right hobby for you. The way I see it, this sort of thing requires passion. If you can't have fun with what you're making, why even do it? Handle this the way you please, but without actually caring for what you're putting out, you're not going to get very far. I see this happen a lot, and I'm just trying to warn you all of doing this. Three final things to consider. A. Treat your subscribers well. They're the source of all your success, they support you, and most importantly, they do care about you. It wouldn't hurt to let them know that you care back. Remember this well, and you shouldn't have too many problems. B. If you end up joining the same community as the general majority of us, please, Respect your fellow countdown makers. There are plenty of individuals out there who do this sort of thing, and all of them go through the same rough shit as you do. Now, if you do plan to join this community, treat its many members as if they were your friends. And C, don't let the trolls get to you. It's obvious that this hobby will eventually attract them to your channel. They will nitpick the living hell out of everything you say and do, whether it's because of your voice, your taste in games, how you look, or concerning your ethnicity, or even your gender. No matter how well you do with this medium, there will be others out there hell-bent on hating you for things more trivial than you can imagine. This happens to everyone, so don't feel like you're doing something criminal, because you're not. Some people just hate everything they see, I suppose. Whatever you do, just don't take their pitiful slander to heart. They're unable to comprehend general thought anyway. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed my little tutorial, and perhaps found it somewhat helpful. If any of you have questions, or need help with something I didn't actually cover, feel free to let me know. And if you manage to make your own countdown by following the advice I gave you, post it as a response to this video. I'd be very happy to see it. By the way, check out the countdown tutorials Josh, Will, and Speed made. They cover similar aspects of what I already went over, but each of them have plenty of information to give. Hopefully they won't kill me for this. Thanks ever so much for 40,000 subscribers, guys. This is being Fawful's Minion, and I say to you, a uh, bye bye